Hey guys, I'm gonna go over battery packs. Got my drill here, um, and an old battery pack. I'm gonna go over the mystery of them and how to um, how to install new batteries. This one's dead. Almost um, all of them will just have some easy. screws. You just have to remove the screws. This one had five. Top pulls off. And what I got in here is virtually all of them also have three terminals. And what they are is one's positive, one's negative. And the third one is generally a heat sink. So there's a temperature sensor on one of the batteries, and if the battery overheats, it no longer puts the voltage to this terminal, so it tells it to stop charging until it cools down. And then when it cools down, it allows you to start charging again. Here we go. This is it. What I've done to start is I've actually laid out I've actually made it, I actually just traced around with a marker, um, wrote where my straps were, just for reference, but I'm also, I'm going to start building a new pack, but in the meantime, I'm just going to leave this one together, easy enough. So I'm going to take my, uh, my new batteries, these are all NICADs, okay, before I tape this together, um, it looks a little confusing and daunting, but it's really not as bad as you think. All we're doing essentially is putting all these batteries in a straight line. Positive, negative, just like they would go in a kid's toy. But the problem is, is that doesn't make a very nice battery pack. So to make this one touch this one, we're just folding it over. And where this one touched this one, we're just folding it over and vice versa. This is all we're doing, but then we're also layering them together to make exactly how we need. Now, I drew it out on here. You can just set your old battery pack right next to you. Don't cut it apart. We'll need this top bracket piece off of it, but the rest of it, we're, we don't need to really worry about it. check, bam, negative, positive, negative, positive, this, this. Now some of the battery packs, um, this is a 14.4, um, the way they come out with that is each one of these batteries is rated at 1.2 volts, you add them together, there's 12 of them, that's 14.4. Um, some battery packs do have, um, to help reduce the size, they do have two that are stacked up here, like, like so. Um, but it's the same principle. Um, you can get these batteries with the tabs pre-installed. You can do it either way. Um, generally the problem with that is the tabs are going the same way and you need to rip off one tab. And So I, I just prefer to, I just take a copper wire, um, just had some scrap copper wire. It doesn't take too long. Um, and I just strip little pieces and then I'll just use these to solder to both. Um, they've actually used steel strips and they actually spot weld them. Um, this battery pack I have worked on before. Um, you'll notice one of the one of the things you can do with these battery packs, sometimes if you have two defunct battery packs, two defective battery packs, um, you can take the individual voltages. You can, you can, usually it's easy if you lay them on their sides, but you can measure the individual voltages of different batteries. Um, once you've tried to charge them, and you can actually find the dead cells. There's a dead one in this one. Have a mark. This one right here is dead. So that one's completely dead. But every single one, other one should measure somewhere around like 1.3 or so when they're fully charged, 1.35. But you can actually take. Um, well, so a lot of times if you have two defunct battery packs, you can actually test all these ones. Cut out the old one, like if you have one that's bad, a couple of these are bad, and then take good ones from another one and solder them in, and then you have one good battery pack. Let's start soldering. Um, again, I'll just set this up right next to it, and I can see exactly where everything is. I've got the first side done, so now I'm just going to flip it over. Got it all soldered, both sides. I'm just going to test my voltage on my two terminals. 
it's actually negative. Uh, my multimeter is a little off. It's missing a missing a um, little LCD spot. So it's 16.1 right now. So they're all connected good. Um, if even one's not connected, you won't get any voltage reading. Um, so these batteries are actually pretty charged up. Um, so now I'm just going to take the, the terminal piece off of this and put it over here. This terminal slides over a little plastic thing, so that's off. Straighten out what I... Again, I said there was a little um, temperature sensor down in there. So I'm going to pry this apart. And it's just loosely attached to the side of the battery. And it's just right there. And once this gets too hot, it just stops the flow of electricity. Um, these two terminals touch the negative terminals, and that just stops the flow to this middle terminal that tells the charger to stop charging. So now I'll take these. Um, Since I'm soldering it, I'm going to pre-tin pre it. Some little things down in there. Now I'm just going to solder. I'm going to solder this down. That looks good. So, that's our battery pack. Just like that. I should have these two terminals. I got 16.1. I should read the same over here, 16.1, until that gets too hot, and then there'll be nothing there. But 16.1, um, sometimes on some of these, there's little ridges down in here that I've actually kind of had to melt out because these wires are thicker. They kind of go right over the top. So I've already melted some of them out because I've already worked on this. I've already replaced some of the batteries in the past. By combining two old battery packs or so. So I'll just melt those down. They'll still fit, it's just really close. Now, um, slide it down in. There you go. So slide that down. Get my screw started. So there we go. Ow! Took about a half hour. Um, and this battery is better than the original. Uh, it'll last, I, the last set that I rebuilt, I think it's going on about five years now. Um, but, awesome. Awesome amount of power in these replacement batteries. Okay, so the question is, what size of batteries are these? These are called sub C, or four fifth C. So they're four-fifths the size of a C-size battery, subcompact, sub, C, whatever. So it's just SUV and the letter C. And that's if you're going to find these. Now, you really want NICAD batteries. You'll, you'll see that um, there's NA or NICD um, batteries or NICAD, NICAD. Those are the ones you want. But you also have nickel metal hydrate, which is NIMH. Um, the difference between those is, you know, they're different chemistries. But the nickel metal hydrate, you know, they'll have higher capacities. They'll hold a lot more energy, so you think you're getting a more powerful um, battery. But what you're going to do is if you put those in these, you're going to burn them out. Because these are about 2,200 microamps. You can get nickel metal hydrate up to like 4,500 microamp hours, more than double the capacity of this. But those batteries are meant to deliver their, bat their voltage over a longer period of time. Or NICAD batteries, which you'll find in your power tool when you pull it apart, and there's reason for that. They're meant to deliver a high amperage fast. You know, the same, you know, if you're running like a skill saw, you know, a cordless drill, something to that effect, they need a, a high amount of power fast. And the best thing to do that is NICAD. These 2200 microamps are about the highest you're going to be able to find. Um, the ones that originally came in it were 1.9 or 1900 microamps. Those are good size batteries if you want to put in the originals. Or even the 1300 that are in a lot of um, power tool batteries. But it, this will work on... Um, DeWalt batteries. This is a Porter cable, but it'll work on DeWalt, Bosch, Milwaukee, Makita, um, and on and on. Any power tool battery, this is what's inside. Just a dozen of these things, you know. This is a 14 4 volt, and 18 volt is going to have um, uh, 14 batteries. Yeah, I could be wrong. But there we go, guys. So, remember, 
don't throw away your old ones. Actually, you're able to um, use some of these batteries. Not all of them are bad. Usually you'll find um, one, two, maybe three. They're actually the only the culprits. And you can take those ones out. Um, the best thing right now is to, once you got these out, is just to test them. Take each individual one and just hold your multimeter on each side and test them. The ones that are good, you can just cut out, set aside. Uh, the ones that are bad, throw away. But if you haven't already, guys, you know, click the little button up there, subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment below, rate, um, subscribe. Awesome. See you guys soon. Bye.